Hello and welcome back to another episode of Tash Teachers. I'm Tash and in today's video I'd like to share with you 10 more cool tips and tricks that you can use in Bitwig. So without further ado, let's jump right in. The first trick I want to show you is how to create a dry wet knob when a plugin either doesn't have a dry wet knob or in the case of something like this Abbey Road Chambers, every time I skip through a preset, even if I bring the dry wet down, it will automatically skip back up. Now that to me is a little bit irritating because I'm never going to want to use the drums on a full dry wet. Um, yeah, I know I could put it on a send here, but just let's entertain the thought. So I've got this, uh, this drum pattern going on. If I were to put on this Abbey Rhodes Chambers, sure I could bring this mix down and I could get a slightly more useful tone. Let's see what it sounds like here. I'm quite liking that, but as soon as I now try and test a different preset, we skip all the way back up. So the trick is, in Bitwig, if you take any device, all you have to do is press Command G, or I'm sure it's Control G on a PC. Uh, this is the same as going to right click and then group. But once you've grouped it, you've now got access to a mix knob. And this mix knob is just a dry wet. So of course, in this case, uh, we do have a dry wet here. So we, we wouldn't actually need to do that. But if, say, we're using a plugin like this, the API 560, this is a, an EQ um, that not just uh, EQs the sound, but there is a, a characteristic sonic quality to using this device. So if I were to, let's just pick a random preset here. Um, let's go for mastering oldies. We'll give that a go. So now this means that if I want to, I can now, let's really increase something, make it a bit drastic. I can now dry wet between that. And I find that very useful when mixing because sometimes you, you want to be able to push it to the extreme like I'm doing here. This is, this is quite extreme EQ pieces. I wouldn't go for that, but there's something about that that works. So if I start to now dry, bring that in a little bit of the dry wet, we're approximating that. Tip number two is to do with remote controls. And to access the remote controls section, all we do is we click this little uh, six dot spread. Uh, although there are eight macros, but that's just six. Uh, yeah, well, I'm just splitting hairs here. If I were to pick one of these, and this is very similar in Ableton to using macros, but the only difference here in Bitwig is you're a bit limited by the fact that when you uh, highlight any of these, any of these parameters that we want to use, you'll then see that there's no way for you to actually scale down the amount of this. So if I were to just undo this and we listen again, I never, ever, ever want to bring my fold knob much higher than about there. Once you start getting up here, that's just hell for me. I don't know why you'd ever really want that. Um, so there's no need for me to have all of that extra space, all of that extra movement on the knob. So if I if I do this, I'm having the same issue where this is all useless. I really, I want the knob to end about there, but for that to be the top. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to, before we create a remote control, we're going to use a macro knob to decide our range. And quite the same as when I made my min-max video. The way that I do this is I put the knob all the way to the top, and then I enable MIDI mapping mode. Uh, or modulation mapping mode. And because we've got this at top, where I drag this to is gonna reflect in the sound. At the moment where in which I'm like, oh, I don't wanna go any further, we've reached the pinnacle. And at that point, let's take that for example. I can now remove this and I can map the remote control to the macro. And now you can see that that macro, because we've defined the minimum and the maximum, is now behaving like we wanted to. So I can email close up that and I've got access to this. So remote controls can be very handy for creating custom mappings for uh, automating synths over time or if you're going to be performing live. Tip three involves laying multiple audio clips down on the timeline at once. If you've come from Ableton, you might be familiar with the idea that when you drag things in, you need to press option in order to prevent them from going onto one channel. Bitwig behaves in completely the opposite way. By Dragging a lot of samples in, it will automatically go to being on multiple channels. The opposite of Ableton, where in which if you're importing stems, you need to press option as a modifier key in order to split them. Uh, in Bitwig, if you want to put all of them on the same channel, though, it's not the option key. If you hold down control, it will then shift between putting them on all different clips, uh, all different channels, to all on one. 
So again, this works even in the clip view. If I now press control, I can put these all onto individual clips in the arranger. Tip number four involves the new convolution reverb. I'm sure a lot of you have seen that you can just throw any sound into it to create a convolution of that shape. But uh, if, say, I'm working at 120 beats per minute and I take uh, one of these conga loops, any of these randoms, and we use this as uh, a convolution, you'll see that it's a little bit messy. And the reason is, is because the actual loop is a different tempo. So if I were to first bring the sample into the timeline, in fact, let's pick something that, uh, oh, that would be good. Let's pick this loop. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that clip and I'm going to bounce it. Because I've now bounced it to 120 beats per minute, if I drag that in, we're now going to have a very different feeling. And in fact, just so I can compare the two, let's listen to what we would have had. Bit of a mess. Now let's drag in the new edited file. And of course, if we were to bring that down, change the envelope a bit, The next trick is one of my favorite workflow tips in Bitwig, and that is that when you press Command A in most software, it will read that to mean Command All, and it will highlight everything in your project file. In Ableton, it works where if I press Command A, suddenly every single clip, every single everything, everything, everything is now highlighted. Bitwig has very smartly got sort of two levels to the Command A conundrum, and that is when you press it once, it highlights everything on that channel. When you press it a second time, that's when suddenly you highlight everything in the, in the project file. Now, I just love this because sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm working uh, on a big project file and I've got lots of different sounds and I don't want to have to zoom out to be able to then highlight everything. So all I do is I click on one of the pieces, press Command A, and now I have access to all of the hats. But say, for example, I now want to turn everything down, all I have to do is press Command A again and that's now highlighted everything. If you press it a third time, you go back to just being that. So it's a great way to just toggle between uh, highlighting individuals and everything in the project. This next tip is super handy when you've got a huge project file with lots of different channels in, and you require an element of surgical precision with your edits, but you still want to be able to hear everything in context, but you just want a little less distraction. Uh, I don't know if you've ever noticed, but up here in the top left-hand corner, we've got a, a little drop-down menu. And if you've got groups in your project file, like I do here, music, bass, uh, and drums, let's say, for example, I had a lot more channels than this, and I don't want to have access to, to seeing this bass and the chords and stuff, I just want to focus on the drums. Well, what I can do is I can click up here, and I can choose, say, just drums. And what that will do is it will show us exclusively the things in that folder, but is the good bit, you can still hear all of the music. Everything is still there. Now this is just very handy because it means that you can break down groups into groups into groups and it means that you can really put your focus where it needs to be. In order to get back to then the full view, all you have to do is press this little arrow up here or you just go back to project. Uh, what's quite cool as well is you still have access to uh, a mixer and there's just of those elements as well. So if you're just trying to mix drums, and you've got the music playing and you're happy with that, sometimes I just find it's really nice to be able to strip it back and to be focusing on less things in order to achieve what it is that I'm trying to do. If you'd like to make Bitwig and music production in general far, far easier, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn on the notifications where in each video I'll be breaking down how pissing easy it is to make music when you get out of your own way. This next tip is another very handy one for when you've got a lot of channels in a project file. And if you're like me, you like to be able to bounce things down to smaller stems. Um, I, I tend to think that I do my best mixing when I manage to bring down the hundreds of channels to at, at least, say, 10 max, so we're talking here. Uh, a lot of that comes from then bouncing, say, the drums group, and I'll often take the kick out and have that separate to the drums group itself. Um, this is just because uh, I feel that the kick and the drums can be mixed differently. So say I've got the kick here and I've got these drums. What I would like to do is I'd like to have just a stem of the drums. And through doing that, then that means that it's a lot easier to make big picture decisions, big stroke 
decisions on what I want to do to the sonics of the drums, or say the bass will be one group, or the music will be one group. Now, the trick lies in the fact that if you notice when you close up a group that you can see all of the individual clips within it. That's just one of two options that Bitwig gives you when viewing group content. So if you right click on this, you have the option to choose master track content or group track content. And master track content will show you nothing. You'll be able to see everything inside it, but you won't be able to see anything on there. And here's where the fun, uh, here's where the fun begins, should we say. If we make a little clip up here with nothing in it, and I then press command B and I bounce it, you'll see that I now have a group of everything in between it. Now, if I had a lot of plugins on here, say I had a lot of uh, very powerful things, say Abbey Road's Chambers, this is going to be using up a lot of CPU. So one of the reasons why I do these bouncing down to groups is so that I can free up some of my CPU, uh, open brackets, I haven't had that issue with my M1 chip lately, close brackets. Uh, but it also just means that I can focus on what's important. This also means that I can now highlight all of these guys and I can just press zero to deactivate them. And if I want, I can even then hide my deactivated clips. I've got it set up as option X, but you can go here and turn this X off. And that now means that the group itself doesn't have anything in it, seemingly. Everything is hidden away, but if you want to bring it back, it is still there. And you have access to everything with all the plugins on it, but it means that we're now dealing with just a single audio clip and we can do whatever it is that we want to that. And you'll still be able to tell when something is a group because it will have a folder next to it. So if you open the folder and you see something, it's because it's deactivated. If you open it and you don't see anything, that's just because your clips are hidden. You just gotta turn on the X. Bitwig is very efficient and it very rarely crashes in the same way that I used to have crashes with Ableton. If it does crash, you have that same recover your project thing, but most of the time it is pretty solid. The only issue I ever seem to have is that sometimes the audio engine will lag, it will get stuck, it will freeze, and instead of then crashing, it just sort of lingers there and you don't really know whether to force quit it or what. So my technique for when the audio engine freezes and hangs on you, I can't I can't make it hang on purpose, but let's say, for example, I can't play anything, it's not working. Uh, my trick is that I usually open up the settings and I change the core audio to jack. And what this will do is it will just crash the audio system. Uh, because I don't have jack set up either, it will sort of just fuck it up for a sec. The moment that you then change it back to core audio, all you have to then do is, in this case, it hasn't changed it, but changing it over to jack will, in theory, create uh, a bit of a fuck up for you, that then when you change it back to core audio, you then have access to it. You may have to activate the audio engine, but that's a little workaround. Despite being a diehard Bitwig fan, there are still certain things that I find that Ableton does better. One of which is the uh, transient shortening mode. So let's say I take this sample here. Let's listen to this. My favorite, favorite thing about Ableton is the ability to just change this to the transient shortening, uh, just sh tight transient shortening, and bring this number down. It's just the most amazing tool for making great sounds out of anything. Uh, when I say great, you know, some, somebody uh, said on my video yesterday about the fact that they preferred it before I did anything to the sounds, and I must reiterate again that everything is totally subjective and relative to your personal tastes. So if, for example, you prefer the sound of that to that, don't fret, I'm sure you can use this technique in another way. Now, the trick is that I can't do that as well in Bitwig. There are various means of sort of doing it, but it's not quite as good as Ableton's. So why not just use Ableton? And the wonderful thing about this is that if I were to freeze this, if I were to consolidate that down to being just one actual piece of audio, you can just drag audio from Ableton directly into Bitwig. And it really is as simple as that. If I, just drag a, if I just drag this down there now, like I, I can just drag a piece across. And the funny thing is it doesn't work the other way. You can't drag something into Ableton. Um, but I use this all the time, especially when I'm, I'm editing pieces of audio, whether or not I'm doing this tightening thing. Or another thing I like to do is, let's say, take some sort of chord progression. If I take this, one thing I like to do in Ableton is I like to stretch it out and I like to put it on textures mode and fuck with the grain size. And let's see what happens if I freeze that because I'm sure we're gonna get some fucking cool sounds out of it. If I now drag that into here, we're now dealing with that in the Bitwig domain. Let's get rid of uh... You can't do that as well in Bitwig. As much as I love, 
because they love doing. Everton does that shit better. My last trick for you today uh, is a small one that you may have overlooked or you, you may have accidentally been stuck in this mode and wondered why things weren't working as well as you wanted, but there is a, there is a use behind it. When you've got any clip open, whether it's an audio or a MIDI clip, uh, you have here on the option, uh, on the side, the option to pick between track and clip mode. And um, most of the time it will be on clip mode, but sometimes it will be on track mode and you'll be like, oh, that's peculiar, right? Uh, things just aren't working as well as I wanted. Uh, why is this useful? Well, on clip mode, everything that you see is everything that is inside this clip. So I can add notes here and you'll see that I can save them for later, but they don't show up anywhere. That's because they're outside of the range of the clip. However, if I go onto track mode now, you can see that not only do I have this, uh, this orange clip, but if I zoom out, we have access to all of the notes afterwards. Again, swip it, switching between clip and track. This means that I can move things between. So I, I can make edits with a full vision of what is actually happening in the project file. So I've got my intro clip here, I've got my verse clip. I can even move things around down here. I don't even have to look at my view up here. This is very handy when you've got the edit view up and uh, you're, you're wanting to do, again, like I showed you with close, uh, opening up the group in more depth. Sometimes you just wanna be doing some editing to your music without being distracted by all the nonsense. Uh, this is also quite useful, but you know you don't need to uh, to do it this way because it's fairly easy to work it up here. But say for example, I wanted to edit some of these kick drums. If I just click on one of them, and I I cut this off, and let's change let's change the the shape of this a bit. Let's do a bit of uh, a little bit of fade on here. We'll do a, a gentle fade. You see that that's only affected the first clip. Um, of course, I could go in and I could highlight all of these, and I could do that. Um, Sorry, I could highlight all of them and then I could group them and yada, yada, yada. But what's quite nice is if I click on one of these and I go to track, I now have all of the kicks available. So if I highlight one of these guys, I can make edits to all of them at once. You can see how useful that can be, especially in a big project file. Well, folks, that's sadly all we have time for today. But I do hope this video has been useful. If you enjoyed it, then please remember to like, comment and subscribe and don't forget to press that notifications button, but only if you'd like to keep up to date with my future videos. In the meantime, happy Friday friends and happy creating.